Chapter Six of Our Little Spanish Cousin. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Patty Cunningham. Our Little Spanish Cousin by Mary F. Nixon Roulet. Chapter Six: The Holidays. Fernando had been three months in school and was beginning to grow tired when it came time for the feast of Christmas, and he was very happy in the thought of all he was to do and see during his holiday. He and Juanito were very much excited in preparing their nacimiento, which nearly every Spanish child has at Christmas time. This is a plaster representation of the birth of Christ. There are in it many figures, a manger surrounded with greens, the baby our lord, St. Joseph and the Blessed Virgin, the wise men worshipping the holy child and the angels hovering near, as well as the patient ox and ass who were his first worshippers. Juanita was wild with excitement as these were all grouped and set in place. She was only four and did not well remember the Christmas before, so that it was all new to her. Christmas Eve there was a grand family party, all the relatives coming to the home of Fernando and partaking of a supper of sweetmeats and wine. In the morning there was, of course, early mass in the great cathedral, where the choir sang divinely. It started way up in the loft to sing the Adeste Fidelis, the church's Christmas hymn for centuries, slowly coming nearer and nearer, and Juanita thought it was an angel choir until she saw it come into sight and the glorious voices rolled forth in a volume of song. Then the children had breakfast, and they made their aguinaldo, for every servant on the place expected a present, as surely as did the old darkies of southern days. The postman, the errand-boy, the porter, the sereno, who walks the street all night with his lantern, trying your door to see if it is locked properly, and assuring you that all is well as the hours strike, all must be remembered." Then the signora took the carriage, and the children accompanied her, as she filled it with sweetmeats for the poor children, and such of her special protégés as could not come to the house for their aguinaldo. It was a cold day, for Grenada grows cold in the winter time, and is not like other Spanish cities which have summer all the year. The wind sweeps down from the Sierras, and brings with it a blustering hint of mountain snows and as the houses have no furnaces and seldom good stoves to heat them, even the rich can suffer, and the poor do suffer bitterly. While the sun shines it matters not, for the sun of Andalusia is so warm and bright that it blesses all who lie beneath it. But when the dark days come, or evening's mantle falls upon the town, people hover close about the brasero and long for summer. With Fernando it mattered little for he was seldom still enough to be cold, and he spent a merry Christmas falling asleep to dream of delightful things, and waking to the happy thought that it would soon be the feast of the circumcision. This is New Year's Day, and is celebrated with much festivity in Spain. The evening before there is a grand party for the grown-ups, and slips of paper are passed around, one being drawn by each person. They are in pairs, so that the one who draws number one must go to supper with number one, and a great merriment is made over the pairing off of the guests. The gentleman has to send a bunch of flowers or sweets to the lady whose number he draws, and not a few matches have been made in Spain by this merry custom. Fernando and Juanita, however, were quite otherwise engaged. They were sent early to bed and were dreaming of the sugar-plums of the morrow, wondering whom they would first meet, for they think in Spain that what happens to you on New Year's Day will determine the course of the whole year. If you meet a pauper you will have bad luck, but if you see a man with gold in his pocket you will have money all the year. Merrier still was the Feast of the Three Kings, which is the day upon which little Spanish children have gifts made them, as American children do at Christmas. This is in honor of the wise men having brought presents to our Lord on that day, so that on the eve of January 6th, the Feast of the Epiphany, Fernando and Juanita set their little shoes on their balcony with a wisp of straw to feed the Magi's horses, and with many surmises as to what they would find in them on the morrow. What wonderful things there were! Fernando had all the things that boys love— 
tops, marbles, balls, and a fine knife, while Juanita had a wonderful dolly and all manner of dainty things for her to wear. The three kings never make one feel like the governor of Cartagena, said Fernando, as he tossed his new ball and lovingly fingered his knife. But there is still another gift for thee and thy sister, said his father, and he led them to the door. There stood a wonderful little donkey, his bridle decorated with streaming ribbons and bells, his kind eyes blinking as he turned his head and seemed to say, Hello, little master, are you and I going to be great friends? "'Oh, Papa, is that for us?' cried Fernando, while Juanita clapped her tiny hands with delight. It took Fernando but a moment to spring on the donkey's back, but his mother cried warningly, "'Be careful, son. Remember how the little prince of Grenada rode too fast through the streets and fell from his pony and was killed?' "'Have no fear,' her husband said, smiling. "'The donkey will not go fast enough to hurt him. That is why I selected him.' and he placed Juanita up behind her brother, bidding Manuel walk beside them, while Mazo, unbidden, jumped around. Everything else that Fernando had sank into insignificance when compared to the little donkey, which he named Babieca, and which he and Juanita rode whenever they had a chance. Babieca was a kind little beast, though somewhat of a rogue. He seemed to know that he must play no tricks when Juanita rode him, and he behaved himself well. But when Fernando rode, it was quite another matter. Babieca would prick up his long ears and go along quietly, then stop suddenly without saying by your leave, and of course Fernando would go over his head. He would not hurt himself at all, and the naughty little mule would look at him wonderingly as if to say, Now what on earth are you doing down there? Fernando soon grew to expect such antics, and was on the lookout for them. When St. Anthony's Day came, of course Babieca had to go with the other four-footed friends of the saint to be blessed and insured from all harm through the year. The 17th of January is the day of St. Anthony, patron of mules, horses, and donkeys, and a grand parade took place. All the people of the town who had such animals drove them down to the church to be blessed and to get a barley wafer. Many of the animals were gaily decorated with streamers and ribbons, and some with flowers, and all along the street small booths were set up containing little images of St. Anthony and barley cakes. Babieca behaved very well at his blessing, though his refractory tongue did try to nibble the priest's stole. But some of the horses kicked and neighed, and, with the braying of the many donkeys and mules, there was a din not often heard in staid Grenada. There were no more fetes for the time being, and Fernando, a trifle spoiled by all the gaiety, had to return to his studies again. It was a long month before carnival time, but his thoughts went forward to that delightful season, and it seemed to the little boy as if it would never come. However, as all things come to him who will but wait, the great day arrived at last, and Fernando was wild with joy. Carnival time is just before the beginning of Lent and is a season of great merriment. Under a turquoise sky with no clouds to mar its fairness, there is a pageant almost like those of the days of chivalry, and Fernando and Juanita, attended by their faithful Manuel and Dolores, saw it all. Fernando dressed as a page, and his sister as a court lady of the days of Isabella the Catholic, and they were masked, as are all the people who throng the streets on these gay days. Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday the carnival continues each year, and the children are asked to little dances at the houses of friends, and also to hear student choirs sing, and to see plays. But what they most enjoy is mingling in the crowds upon the paseo, throwing confetti at those who throw at them, seeing the flower-decked carriages, the wonderful costumes. Monks, nuns, generals, court ladies, flowers, animals, all are represented, all are laughing and throwing confetti right and left. Children are selling confetti, crying shrilly, Confetti! Five centimos a packet! Showers of a million colors! Only a perro chico! Ah, oh, how gay and delightful it all is! Juanita saw much, and Dolores lay down at night thanking the saints that the carnival lasted but three days. But Fernando saw everything and poor Manuel's legs were weary as he kept pace with his little master, now here, now there, now everywhere, 
laughing and jesting, the merriest lad in all the carnival. Alas, it was all over. Ash Wednesday dawned, dull and heavy, the weather as sad and sorry as the day. Fernando dragged himself to church, where his brow was marked with ashes according to custom, and gazed longingly at the entierro de la sardina, a bit of pork the size and shape of a sardine, buried to show that the fast had begun, for no one in Spain eats meat on Ash Wednesday, and very little of it in Lent. Fernando looked so depressed at supper that his mother asked him, "'What is the trouble, little son? Are you ill?' "'No, mamma," he said, "'but it is so long till Easter.' "'Not if you do not think about it,' said his mother with a smile. "'Do your work with a will, and the days will pass quickly. "'If you are a good boy, you shall have a treat at Easter.' "'Oh, what will that be?' he asked, and Juanita cried eagerly, "'Shall I have it, too?' "'Both of you,' the mother said. "'Your father is going to take us to Sevilla "'to see the Grand Easter Festival, "'and we shall see your brother and sister as well, "'and your cousins and your Aunt Isabella, "'so you must be good children.' "'Indeed we will,' cried both joyously "'at the thought of so much pleasure. "'End of chapter 6 "'Recording by Patty Cunningham.'